part, like, I mean, you could like listen to like the criticisms I had, like I'm, I'm looking back on it, talking to you. Cause I haven't really like <laughs> thought it through yeah. too much before. Like my biggest criticisms are not every character I was fully invested in. Like, that's, yeah. that's like, that's <laughs> really, that's the worst thing you could say. Not every character I was fully invested in. Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am joined once again by Preston Jacobs today talking about Three Body Problem on Netflix and the High Sparrow was High Sparrowing once again. Yeah, they definitely uh, typecast our High Sparrow for uh, a very High Sparrow role, though some of the Game of Thrones actors were doing kind of the exact opposite of what they they were cast before. Yeah, Like I would say that you know, Sam Tarly is a very different character. Davos is obviously the exact opposite of who he is, you know. Yes. And, uh, um, I'm trying to think of some of the others that were, I know there's a handful of others. Oh, Tycho Nostoris is briefly in there, but he has a bit role. I think there's a few other bit roles. I, I remember seeing the guy who played Ned in the play in, 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 um, <laughs> the, in Bravos yes, the, was in there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't Samwell punch him out? <laughs> yes, yes, that guy who actually appears twice in Game of Thrones because he's also a guard on the beach, and everyone's like, "But the thing is, he has such a he has such a like a um a recognizable face that everyone's like, why is the actor who played Ned on a on a now on the beaches of of King's Landing?" But um, yeah, it was just that uh, the High Sparrow was what was back, but mm -hmm. um. I could forgive all that. He uh, he has a relatively small role, and uh, he he did his job. And he um, did. So yeah, what? So overall, what's your opinion? We, you've watched all eight episodes. I've watched all eight episodes. Yeah. For me personally, I think it was pretty good. I think the struggle yeah. for me as a book reader is that the first half of everything felt really fast. And then the end for me was great. But I've heard from yeah. non-book readers that they loved the fast, faster pace beginning and then the end falls off for them. I mean, I thought that the, the entire series was excellent. I, I, I really do. I do agree that the first half has a has a buzzing I need to see the next episode pace. Yeah. And it does slow a little bit by, by the second half, but uh, like the, and it, it may be that you're just very attached to like Samwell and I'm not even going to call him Jack. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you get very attached to characters like Jack. And then once he's gone, you're like, Oh, he was one of the most interesting characters. And um, you know, it's sad that he's gone, but yeah, you know, it's and powerful that he's gone, but uh you know the, the characters, and the, and and also it just gets it gets more powerful and sad as it goes. It does. So it does. It's a you know, but overall, general review of the show is, um, wow, no, Dan and Dave, when they try, <laughs> when they try, and, <laughs> and they tried, they they can do it. Like it's really, yeah. it was, it was a really good show for, and I understand that the material is famously very difficult to adapt. It should be unadaptable, even though it's been adapted now a few times. Right. Um, it's, it's uh, a very abstract story um, for, for what people have also said is not a great translation that the, that the translation that exists of three body problem I heard it's not even very good, like the, the translation really? and a lot is a lot is lost. Okay. Well, well yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, I know that there's a lot of like in the original language, there's a lot of mm. play on words and stuff like that, too, that has a lot of deeper meaning. So, I mean, some of that stuff yeah. I know about, but as far as like other things, I'm not too sure. So, so I have a moderate background in, in the Chinese language and I, I really did some searching about the meanings of different things. And what I found is that unfortunately, in order to really communicate everything, you have to have a very good background in Chinese literature. And the number of people that speak fluent English 
who would care to like tell people in English about all of like the the, the background and meanings of, of of things and the and the allusions and the and the double you know the play on words and stuff like that. Like there there's none. There's no one who's actually doing like the the transfer over, which I suppose isn't that surprising. I mean, I think about something like Game of Thrones. I mean, a, a Song of Ice and Fire. And in English, how many people are really like sitting there and talking about like deeper themes and stuff like that, you know? So, so now that we have three body problem in another language where the people that understand the references are in China. Right. Know? Right. And, and then the people that are going to have a background in literature might not be the people that are, have a background in science fiction. And so when you, when you make a reference, are the science fiction fans even getting, I, right. you know, I don't know. Um, I can go as far as to say things like the the name of the book is mm -hmm. in Chinese is just Santi. Yeah. Which, which means in a, in a three. very general sense, three bodies. Yeah. Okay. So like you can look at the title of the book and say, okay, well, this book is, yes, it's about the three body problem, but it's also about the alien race, the Santi, because mm -hmm. in the, in the book, the, the Trisolarians are called the Santi and yeah. in the show they've, they've kept that, but that double meaning is lost in the English translation, it's just called the three body problem. And the race is called the Trisolarans. So yeah. all, all, the, all like, even in the translation of the title, we've lost that double meaning. Hmm. And then you go a little further and you say in Chinese, the word for problem and the word for question is the same. Like you, you raise your hand in class. You say, Oh, you know, I, you know, well, yo, wenti, wenti. Okay. That's a problem, but it's also a question. I have a, I have a problem. I have a question. So okay. when you're when you're saying three body problem, you're not just saying the problem that needs a solution. You're also saying the question, like what's the three. So now we're talking about like yeah. multiple meanings, like and and then it even goes beyond this in that like they do a lot of puns in Chinese based on words that sound the same because a lot of things sound the same in Chinese. So like when you say like the race Santi, could you be making a pun to Santi, which which is like three questions, and then like. The literature, there, there's probably like all sorts of philosophers who talk about the three questions, like, like Chinese yeah. culture is huge into like, oh, well, you need to know like the five questions of nature or like the three, the mm -hmm. three, you need to climb the four great Buddhist mountains. Like they love numbering things like that. And so yeah. like, I'm reading it. I'm like, okay, Santi, I bet there's some fucking pun <laughs> or some fucking <laughs> reference that yeah. Santi is like referencing in Chinese culture and I'm missing it. Like I'm just completely missing. It could be anything. A lot um, of the characters, it's something a bit similar, like Luo Ji, yeah. I think sounds like logic or um, something right. like that. So Fan is a character in the book, but she's also, you know, So Fan is, you know, this technology that they have, but her name, I guess, is sounding like a common Chinese name as well. Yeah. So like there's a lot of like play on words that I'm aware of, but don't quite fully understand due to not yeah. understanding the language. So like they're doing the same things, like what sounds like logic to them, what sounds like because they might have a different Chinese word, but then they then they kind of know the English word and then the, the pun in, in Chinese to what sounds like that to them. And so much yeah. is like I'm just saying that so much is lost. Like you know about what like the wall facers. Yeah. To face a wall has a whole bunch of meanings in Chinese. So like if you're meditating, yes. You you would face a wall and be in a state of meditation, but you'd also like to face a wall is also at the same time to block out the rest of the world and not know what's going on. Yes. And and that, all of these things at once. Okay. Knowing that, does that make you curious about where the wall facer project is going or headed? Right. Well, <laughs> absolutely. Like clearly, clearly he's making some sort of reference about like the wall facers. Like on the one hand, he's saying that he's saying, oh, there's something like deep, like deep and meta and, and mystical. But at the other, at the other end, you're saying, oh, but you don't really know what's going on at all. Knowing the story so far, the story is very mm -hmm. anti-religious. Absolutely. So like to have reverence for Buddhism or mysticism, I would say he's, he's probably throwing that out. Like he's given this He's given a name that is supposed to give reverence to religion, but the, the story is so very anti-religion where, where I'm just like, okay, this wall facer thing is not going to turn out well. You know, <laughs> it, was a, it was probably a bad idea. Like anything in the story so far that has a religion uh, attached to it is trashed. 
Like the fact yeah. that like all the cult cult people are calling are clearly like treating the the, the Santi like gods and waiting for them to save them, you know. Okay, so the show kind of leaned into that more than the books do. With the books, obviously there's not enough time to do all of like the nuanced layers of this group, the boat people, the ETO, but there's like three factions of them and they all want something different. And what they did on the show is kind of like compact it and made it like one solid thing where it's like, okay, there's not going to be any confusion over this. Everybody mm -hmm. understands like what a cult looks like, right? Let's just run with Move it. Move on, right. Yeah. While there's probably some like, he's probably like the, the author's probably making some sort of like statement about the three types of religious people and what they do <laughs> Maybe. or something. Yeah. You know, I'm sure it's some, he's making some sort of metaphor. With how dense the books are, I think one of the things that was an impossible ask was to expect that from an eight episode TV show. So a lot of stuff like that, I'm just, you know, it kind of like rolls right off of me. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. an obvious thing that's going to happen. But I know a lot of people were really upset, like, oh, it's not as confusing enough. Like it needs to be more intricate and dense and just mm. scientific. But I mean, it's, it's Here not <laughs> right but at the same at the same time watching the show and the eight and the eight, mm -hmm. and the eight episodes the things that i thought were really stupid yeah turned out they were all from the book or i'm just like that's <laughs> tell really, me, really tell me which one <laughs> well first of all first of all the santi only being four light years away is fucking stupid okay that's <laughs> that's so fucking stupid you're telling me that the santi are in the alpha centauri system because it's true that the Alpha Centauri system is a three sun system, but you're trying to tell me that a civilization that has the ability to build a world sized computer and then shrink it to the size of a proton and, and like and survive like multi uh, thousands and thousands of years of like of erratic life and dehydrate yourself and rehydrate yourself mm -hmm. and, and, and invent like essentially like magic computer programs that can do anything in the world. You're trying to tell me that those motherfuckers never thought, Hey, does the closest fucking star system have a habitable world? <laughs> like they never fucking, that never crossed their fucking mind. They needed okay. gay to send them a message before okay. they were like, what, what? There might will, be something okay. in the soul system. <laughs> like, I love that so... you brought I love that you brought this up because it there is a reason kind of why. So that's that would be like next season, kind of like oh, the yeah. answer to <laughs> that question. Because <laughs> it's uh, hopefully but no, like that's just no, really, it, really fucking no, it, dumb. <laughs> It sounds ridiculous not knowing where the story is going. Absolutely. Yes. You're right. And, you know, I get it with like, I mean, you're talking like the dark forest thing, right? And like, yeah, how... yeah. But still, your their entire civilization is dying and they're dealing with this horrible, chaotic three body like system. And they never were like, hey, let's just let's just jump over to the soul system. It's one body. <laughs> let's just jump over there. Like in any of their thousands and thousands of years of existing, they never they right? never like let's, send let's a do probe it. or something. Right. It took yeah. it took yay to be like come conquer us for them to be like hey let's jump into some ships like why why didn't you do it before yay like <laughs> it seems it seems like that was my big problem and i'm just like this makes no sense i hope this and then i looked at and then i looked up with the summary of the book i'm like oh that's from the books yeah, yeah. that's really stupid <laughs> like that's <laughs> Custom finds really no funny. logic here. It's over. Oh, I mean, like, I mean, I don't, I don't know how they, they, like, the Trisolarans ever got to their technology level with their chaotic system in the first place. But right, um, you know, a lot of stuff like fundamentally doesn't make sense. But I kind of get the sense, and I, having not read the series and only read about the series, mm -hmm. that you know he he was coming up with all of these like very fun thought-provoking concepts and he wanted to shove as many in as possible yes um in the story and you know the only way to do it was you know the way he did it you know yeah you know, i say this lovingly but lovingly it goes off the rails but i enjoy every <laughs> second of it it is right. i mean things get so bizarre 
I've had conversations with people where I'm trying, like, tell, you know, people who don't care about spoilers, where I'm telling them book plots and they're like, this is like, <laughs> like, this yeah. sounds like, like an acid trip. <laughs> like what you are saying makes no sense. It sounds unhinged lovingly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. When you start talking about like, you know, mm -hmm. pocket universes and multidimensional existence and, and, and things like that, just like very, it was, it was yeah. very clear that the author was taking the most cutting edge ideas in physics and being like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to write a sci-fi story that contains all of them. Yeah. Like we, <laughs> you know? we've got this guy, he's into this girl. He, she's not really into him, but he's dying and they want it. They need a brain. So they're going to send it. They're going to shoot it out into space. And it's just like, yeah. where, where's this going? But I, I love it. I love it. That, that was the weird point in the story where, so the, the, the story was going on, on, so you can kind of say, okay, well the Santi, they've got whatever fucking crazy shit going. Yeah. Everything was kind of realistic on the human part. Cause you can be like, okay, where did this, where did that, those, those VR helmets come from? Well, well, they, they, they came from the Santi. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then you get to the, sus the suspended animation point and you're like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> we don't, we <laughs> don't have, sus <laughs> we don't have, sus we don't have the ability to cut off somebody head keep it alive and put it in 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 suspended animation and shoot it into space and have it survive for 200 years <laughs> shooting and actually, it into space with like nuclear with nuclear <laughs> like blasts yeah. on like on like um yeah the nano like, uh, sale. nano <laughs> nano fiber sails like we don't have that we I don't were, but know. it's it's a creative it's a very creative idea i have to give yes. them that yeah, of course. Now people talk about like the way they would do it would be we would send like a thousand microprobes like shot with lasers and then hope that like one microprobe out of the thousand makes it, you know, because of space dust. Right. Right. Um, Something like that. Yeah. I mean, in, I mean, now, now we're talking about like real life, like in real life, <laughs> if you accelerated his his frozen head up to 0.1 percent the speed of light. At some point on the way, he would he would hit a piece of space dust and just be annihilated. That's the sad thing is even if we can get things up to a, a workable speed, it's now like a one piece of space dust would 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 make it the trip impossible. So I think that's the um, that's the big appeal of Thomas Wade, Liam Cunningham's character, because as things progress we're just we're just seeing humanity throw like whatever oddball idea that they can come up with like out into the universe mm. hoping that you know one of these one of these projects something will have some type of results and that's just what they're running with and i mean yeah. i love how this you know the brain into space plot for real this is a very low probability chance that anything will come of this and yeah i do appreciate how the season pretty much ends on that and it's just like well that didn't work let's move on yeah i mean knowing knowing stories like somehow mm -hmm. the brain is coming back at some point like i get it like at the, some at, <laughs> the preston at, pattern recognition has kicked right. in right <laughs> you you put it you put in far yes. too much you put far yeah. too much time for for that to go nowhere or just like yes. the the star in the sky like jack like you've introduced a character jack who has a whole bunch of money then you killed him off and you gave all of his money to somebody who then bought a star and you're like okay and the star is what like 400 years away yeah, 400 light years like away that. so like yeah i get that like this probably has nothing maybe this is probably like that star system is probably going to come in and it's like important that sh that somebody is going to own that star system, mm -hmm. whether it be a descendant or her in suspended animation or something like yeah. something's going to clearly that star system is going to come back. And like the relevance of Jack existing and having that money in order to, to purchase that star system, like, you know, ha you know, yeah. So I, I hate comparing the two because they're not alike at all, but a Song of Ice and Fire and the Three Body Problem trilogy does really kind of coexist where you get like little sprinkling of things happening all over the series and the author typically comes back around to it. A plot is dropped and then you come back like a book later and it's like, oh, okay. So, yeah. all right. 
now George George will he he calls it gardening where he'll yeah. like, he'll like introduce three things and two of them won't come back and one will does does the does the author um what's what's his name it's Sushin Sushin Liu I think yeah that sounds I mean that sounds right to me but I'm yeah yeah I mean everybody so so I I think it's S I X I N. Right. Or C I X I N. Um, so, so in 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 Chinese uh, pinyin, uh, a a C is a T S sound together. So okay. C T, and then an X is an S H sound. Sh. So C Xin Liu is is, okay. is going to be his name, and, and, and I've heard people say things like. Zine and and you're like no it's uh, yeah <laughs> Leo but like one of the things I kind of noticed about because I I understand that the story is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger mm -hmm. but one of the things that I thought that was interesting in the show was the the character of um um Saul and yeah. Saul you know is kind of like look I I'm not gonna have kids. The, the aliens aren't going to come for 400 years. This isn't my problem. It's not something I should worry about. While well, the other people are like very worried, right? Mm -hmm. However, it, what, what's funny is that you can expand that concept out more and say, even beyond like the 400 year invasion, eventually our sun is going to extinct, is, is going to, you know, supernova. This is true. And so we personally shouldn't worry about it. But then, but humanity eventually has to worry about it or at least life eventually has to worry about it there's a lot of this like kicking the can down the road kind of ideas but the, well the yeah science has to solve strong, all of these problems you know yeah it's this pretty strong tie-in to like environmentalism you know like just you know yeah. keep doing things as usual we'll worry about it tomorrow also probably not to unlike some of the like bigger metaphorical meanings that George might have been into. Yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting that the 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 show ends very optimistically because it's like, on the one hand, yeah, we need, we do need to worry about environmentalism and things like that, or else we're gonna we're gonna die. And whether whether it be like the environmental problems or the the whatever our, our sun supernovaing or or yeah. the, the, all the stars in the universe like going out. But then there's this hopeful message of like. Yeah, do you see what happens to bugs? Like they figure out one of them figures out how to survive and then the bugs are yeah. everywhere. And yeah. I've thought about that too about like the universe is expanding and you know people claim that there's going to be heat death. But I'm like in all of the trillions of galaxies and all of the quadrillions <laughs> of worlds there's not going to be one civilization that figures out how to how to like overcome that and, rever and re or reverse it or or mm -hmm. move beyond like the heat death of the universe there's not going to be a one civilization that figures it out Ma you know maybe <laughs> you know? so like maybe but right? will they be willing to uh share that knowledge with anyone else you know maybe you know maybe you know, we'll get to we'll get to us i don't know maybe but, <laughs> um you know, hard, very, very hard to say. I mean, I'll be, I'll be dead a quadrillion times over, but, um, but yep, uh, yeah. I do, I do like the, I do like the idea of like humans, like we're, we're just bugs that the Trisolarans are saying that we're, that we're just like bugs. And it's so true. I mean, have you ever like mowed the lawn and just like mowed over uh, an anthill and been like, well, <laughs> Whoops. Right, but at the same time, that those ants they, they're, they're better running, than us. They always come back. They always come back. They, they always do. come back. I mean, it was quite a quite a compliment in the end that we're bugs. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good that we're bugs. Make that the mascot. We'll, we'll figure it out. So the uh I want to say that the show is very Game of Thrones. Um, okay. D and D seems to have injected a lot of uh, Game of Thrones elements into the show, whether it be ridiculous, stupid jokes, or whether it be sex, or whether it be violence. Like then, all of a sudden, in order to make things entertaining, they like mm -hmm. throw things out. Like um, very beginning of the show, like we need to understand understand like who these characters are. And if you just have an exposition where somebody's like, "I make nanofibers," and I'm like a theoretical <laughs> physicist or whatever, 
Yeah. It's a little dry. So they're like, how about they're at a bar and they're getting hit on by some drunk guy who like just finished karaoke. And it's like, yeah, that's really silly and stupid. But at the same time, it does keep you awake. Right. While like these characters are being are being introduced, you know, and I get it. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, you know, all right, D&D, &D, you know. All right. <laughs> All right. Was there was there a certain plot or character that you liked more or less than the rest? I was very attached to and and started feeling for um, the the guy with cancer. Well, um, yeah. I thought, and I understand that like it, it gets a little repetitive where every friend is like, "Dude, why don't you just tell her <laughs> that you're dying?" And he's just like, "Whatever. I just want to lie on the beach." Like, I still that was my I still favorite really too. Felt, yeah, it was yeah. very powerful. There was definitely some some moments where I got choked up and and, and misty eyed. D and D made me feel something, and you know it's like bravo to them. Where you know I didn't know where the character was going or what they were going to do with him. The show proved that it can be very cruel to the characters, and because these are a largely invented characters, you don't know which ones are going to survive because you can't even be like, well, in the book, you well, know. They, they, all the characters that we have from the Oxford Five have a like corresponding book character with a different name. And yeah. some of them show up, you know, later down the road, but they are invented, but not, <laughs> if that makes sense. Right. I mean, I, I, mm -hmm. I get that like Davos Wade is from mm -hmm. a later book and they've, they've, they've brought him for like back to here. The same with um, the, the, the guy dying of cancer. I understand yeah. that he's a later later character that they've they've shoved into the Oxford Five and stuff like that. Um, yeah, they they did that, but the the books aren't chronological. So like that book plot happens during this time, but it just comes like it shows up in a later book. So like they've just yeah. done it chronologically, which frankly I think is a good idea because if you if you started season three with Will getting cancer, you'd be like, who cares? Who is this guy? I yeah. know nothing about him. The only thing that there was, there, the only other thing that I thought was a bit weird was, and but almost all literature does this. It seemed like such a coincidence that everything was happening to the group of the Oxford Five. Like mm -hmm. the fact that Ye's daughter happens to be like Saul's boss and new and family friend of Jean. <laughs> And yeah. like knew the Oxford five seems like a remarkable fucking coincidence. And then yeah. that Saul seems to be chosen fairly randomly to be a, a wall facer out of nowhere. That seems pretty fucking random. Um, you know, that, that kind of stuff, like, or I'm just like, uh, wh why is everything happening to the, to the Oxford five? You know, it just so happens that the Oxford five also knows the nano fiber person who's who's inventing like one of the most important inventions yeah. on the planet she just happens to know in, these people you know? in the books it's a little bit similar i mean kind yeah. of yaz daughter it's the same scenario and then the right. nanofiber guy knew the daughter but it's not as tight-knit as like a friend group if that mm -hmm. you know I also find it very, and I understand this is from the book too, but I found it very odd that uh, the 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 foreigner would be living in rural China during the fucking Cultural Revolution. <laughs> um, it's I'm just Mike, like, Evans. Really? Mike Evans. Mike Evans. I'm like, that's pretty fucking bold. <laughs> you know, it's pretty millionaires that a millionaire son <laughs> would, would, would would like move to china during the cultural revolution where the entire world knew that like people were getting executed right and left and he's just like you know what gotta move out to the yolo, <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> like and i understand that and that's from the book so it's just like yeah I'm just like that, that's weird that's really mm. weird um yeah okay <laughs> um it's a it's I find the whole Chinese so so in China criticism of the government has to be done very carefully and very deliberately and in a very abstract way. It's not that that not that it doesn't happen, mm -hmm. but you can't be very direct about it. And so I'm actually surprised at three body problem existing because it's criticisms of the government. You know, I, I do see that they're measured um, and, and focused at a particular time period. And, and I'd, I'd be surprised if the book actually criticizes Mao as much as the the um, the, show the show does. Like, you know, it's one thing to like, like, 
for instance, in China, you could be like, oh yes, the, the, the cultural revolution was a was a time of mistakes. You can say something like that, but you can't say like Mao was a motherfucker who did this and this and this and this. <laughs> like it's implicit. It's implicit when you say something mm -hmm. like in the cultural Revo during the cultural revolution, there were mistakes, but you're not being explicit, right? Right. And so, uh, you know, I, I I think that the the existence of the book is is very interesting because he's he's really walking the line. On what's oh yeah, yeah, know. it is pretty yeah. interesting. I know with the Chinese adaptation, the live action one, a lot of little things got distilled due to you know taking bits away from Yao Wen Xia's story. So yeah. I mean, it's it, it's it's rough. It's got to be rough trying to adapt these in China. <clears throat> And having like a creative right. vision and being like, oh, how do we do this? <laughs> and and <clears throat> and that's the big thing is like when you're writing a science fiction book where only a certain class of people is really reading this and understanding it, that's very different from this is going to be on fucking TV. Right. And so you have to be you you can actually be a little more reckless with the with the written than with the TV version. The TV version. You gotta. You, this is going to the masses. Yeah. They don't even need to be able to to, to read. You, yeah, they're not going to put that in. And, and I, I'm sure they also didn't know that it was going to be this worldwide phenomenon when they first kind of allowed it. So that's another thing where like when it first came out, they're probably like, OK, well, you know, it's just a random sci fi book. Had right. they known it was going to be a global phenomenon, they may have been a little, a little bit uh, more hesitant, a little more hesitant yeah. to allow him to write what he wrote. I mean, it's it, really, though, it's like the crown jewel of China's science fiction, though. I mean, people mm. adore this series. I mean, I I understand. I love it. I mean, I love it myself. But this, I mean, this guy, the author, just putting his crazy ideas into a book and people like loved it. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. The the opening is is very, I mean, first of all, I have to say that the, the especially the first um, three or four episodes are really, really well directed and really beautiful. They're, they're, the shots of China, um, yes, are, are, yes. are especially are especially good and especially well done with just the costumes and the and the scenery. Very accurate Chinese uh, Cultural Revolution posters. Very accurate like dress and garb, everything. A lot of people were discussing like, would you really have a physics professor being beaten to death over teaching Einstein in in a public setting like that? And you know, a lot of people are like heeing and hawing, being like, well, it's hard to say. It might have happened. Like China has a very interesting relationship with Einstein, which by itself, you you know, there are many people that have written books and papers on like China's uh, relationship with Einstein, but also like yeah. the Cultural Revolution when it first started was was not very centralized. And so like what someone was doing in some random town Village somewhere, yeah, sit, yeah. You, you know, maybe, you know, like you can't, you can't really say it's possible because like no one knew what Mao wanted. So they're like, they're all kind of guessing. Mm -hmm. Like Mao makes a statement like, uh, you know, Einstein, we shouldn't be teaching Einstein because, you know, he's, he's, uh, he represents maybe, you know, Western bourgeois attitudes or right. relativity does it goes against the the concept of like the truth of the masses or something the truth of the people he just says something offhand like that and then like every village is like fuck what do we do yeah. i don't know <laughs> kill the physics professor you know it's possible <laughs> you know it's possible i don't know if there's any documented cases of some of a physics professor being beaten to death on a stage because of teaching einstein but you know, it's something that could have happened, oh. maybe, you know. Preston, that the moment where she's reunited with the woman that killed her father. Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was so much. I mean, it happens yeah. in the books, too. But the actress that played this young woman just, oh, she nailed it. She nailed it. Oh, yeah. Just the the, the lack of just no no apology. Or yeah. Like, no. Nope. I'd do it again mm -hmm. if you were here right now. Yep. She was a true yeah. believer. She know. was. Out of all of the characters, I mean, I really liked Will's story. And mm. oddly enough, like some people weren't too into Jack, but I loved Jack. <laughs> like, oh, I thought Jack was great. I thought he I was amazing. <laughs> that The moment he gets into the game and he's just like punching the NPCs. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, he had me right there. <laughs> oh yeah, and which makes which makes it so heartbreaking um, <laughs> yeah. when he's killed, you know. I yeah, I most connected with with Jack and Will. I connected with Augie near the beginning, 
mm-hmm. um, when she when she was dealing with the, with the trauma of of you know the countdown in her head and and like ending her work and then and then Augie's character kind of just kind of becomes chaotic and and they kind of just need her to do what she needs yeah. to do in a very in a various moment. It was it was um, a little bit harder for me to feel for her because like seeing everything that's happening I'm like well you know like loss of lies sucks but like logic we got to do something here so right i mean it's it's, it's hard the, for it's, me to <laughs> hard for me to you know feel too much right had they on. had they introduced and the, in the end they didn't actually they show the kids and then they show people getting dismembered <laughs> And the implication is all, obviously all the kids got dismembered, but they never showed a kid getting dismembered. Right. Um, it's all like a foot. <laughs> yeah. I guess I needed something else. Like if Augie had like, if they, if they just had a scene with like Augie hanging out with her like niece or something, you know? Yeah. That would have been Or something. Good. Then I would have been like, oh, right. Like Augie has understands like there you children go. <laughs> or something, some, you know, something. I'm just saying it seemed odd that like of all the characters, why is Augie the one that is most upset about kids getting killed? Any character could care mm-hmm. about kids getting killed. Why is it Augie? Yeah. What's making her sensitive to this? Like yeah. what's, yeah. So, you know, I can kind of understand like her, her thing in the beginning. We've established her, we've established her as as a no nonsense businesswoman who now has to give up her dream, the thing she's been working her entire life on, or else she's going to die. That's an intriguing story. And then we don't know what to do with her after that. She's kind of flirting with Saul, mm-hmm. kind of, um, kind of upset that like Saul has one night stands. We get that statement like maybe somebody's in lo- maybe somebody loves you right now. You know, like Jin says that to Saul, and I'm like, oh, are they talking about Augie because? I don't know if they really have any sexual chemistry, but okay. <laughs> that scene at the end where she's, I don't know if she's using the nanofiber as like a water filtration or whatever. Yeah. I think, I almost think they should have done that in the beginning, like showed her attachment to her work and it being something that she wants to present to humankind for like the betterment of humankind. So the opposite oh, yeah. of a weapon. I think that would have been a good way to like, really motivate her to be as upset as she is when it's bastardized and weaponized. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it kind of fits both ways, but I mean, I I do think I I prefer your way, but I I guess it's like, she saw the destruction. Now she's going to, of her her stuff being for used as a weapon. And now she's going to use it for good, but they'd established in the beginning that her nanofiber could be used for good. So, you know, in, in some random exposition kind of thing of, of like her partner. It's yeah. weird that they t- they made her partner like he's be a vi- be a, a semi villain. Right. Like, we're going to sue you. Like what? I think he's going to come back. I think that guy is also in cahoots with the Clarence's son because his son was like, "Oh, I've got this business thing going on. I think that might have been the same guy that he was like, this is the guy who's funding it. Now, Jin, I th- of the Oxford Five, like, yeah, I was most attached to Will and and Jack. And mm-hmm. I did, I did like the first half of the Augie story. Jin is she's the protagonist. So like she kind of is the most bland. Um, <laughs> which, which is kind of funny, you know? She just kind of has to has to go through all of these scenes and and be the person that's everywhere. And I guess I liked, I mean, I liked Saul. Saul was, he mainly played Will's friend and Augie's friend for yeah. the entire season. And then at the end is like, you're the most important person in the world. I is randomly. Yes. What? <laughs> like I went from everybody's random, everybody's friend to that. yeah. Trisolaren, so Santi, public enemy number yeah. one. Though I did, I mean, the the, the Nora story was pretty uh, was a pretty big gut punch. Um, when when his when his one night stand is killed, that was uh, <laughs> like I knew it was coming, but still, <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's pretty 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 harsh, pretty harsh. What did you think of um what's what's the 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 investigator's name? I want to call him Clarence. Wong because Clarence. I want to call yeah. him Wong because he's Wong and in, in Doctor Strange. Big but she. Um big, I, yeah. 
he's my favorite character from the first book like hands down no contest i like the actor he's great but he makes him he makes the character very likable yeah he's he's great but i would have liked to see a little bit more more from him i think like my favorite plot line of his in the books is the whole attack on judgment day this ship right mm -hmm. so we've got all of these like generals and political wonks and like all of these important people in a meeting room and they're like how do we do this we got to get this data off of the ship and everybody's throwing out ideas and what i love about that scene is Clarence is like, he's like the the everyman. He's not a scientist. He's not a general. And he's the one who puts this whole thing together. And I really love that part because he's not, he's not like super intelligent like a scientist, but he is very like quick on his feet in a different type yeah. of way. So like, I love that moment showing like, you don't have to be like a genius scientist to be very intelligent in your own way. And so little yeah, things like you, that were missing for me, but I still enjoyed it. You are right in this story where everybody's a, everybody's a super genius. Mm -hmm. He's, he's the only normal character. Yeah. Um, e even though he works for a mysterious Intel agency <laughs> that they never give the name of, right. They never yeah. give the name and he's the one that gives the lesson at the end, you know, he outsmarts all or yes. he's, he's in a sense, he's, you know, in a way he's smarter than everybody. Right. Right. I appreciate um, how grounded he is. I think he says a line in the books where everybody's, you know, questioning these big existential problems. And he's like, buddy, if I'm staring at the sky, like looking at the stars, the bad guy's going to get away, like come back down to earth with me. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoy that about his character. How did you feel about older Yay? Uh, uh, her the performance of uh, Rosalind Chow is her name. You I know, thought she was great. Keiko from Next Generation, or <laughs> if you go way back, she's one of the four from the the Joy Luck Club. This is um, I really uh, liked her. I thought she was great. I thought she had a lot of character too. I saw people being like very upset that she was cussing, but I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> who cares? I know, I'm right? Surprised, <laughs> I'm surprised they. I'm surprised they. Um, they they let her go like let her out of out of um out of jail that's something that i really enjoy from the books because essentially like sending out the location of earth to an alien isn't against the law you know so like they really have no grounds to hold her on anything like what what do you imprison her for like you have to make something up first to like bring her back in so yeah, yeah. <clears throat> did you like her did you enjoy her uh, character. I, I did. I was surprised. I was very surprised the interpretation that they gave her no soft side with Jonathan Price, you know, the high, the high sparrow. You can tell like he's a likable guy, you know, mm -hmm. he's got, you know, he's, he's got a soft side. He's, he, he, he gets enjoyment out of things, but with both young way and old yay, nothing. They are the sourest, yeah. sourest <laughs> characters. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, like, except for like the two seconds where they share a kiss, like <laughs> her and her, her, bo her boyfriend share a kiss, like nothing. Watching your dad get beaten to death on a, on a stage, like, uh, changes you forever, I guess. <laughs> I guess, I guess. I mean, she, she, luckily she didn't end up like Aria, you know, making lists and. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was pretty. I thought it was very funny the fake out at the end where um about Vera that you know you think because all the other scientists are killing themselves that Vera killed herself because of the the Santi and like controlling her and it's like no she just killed herself <laughs> like oh okay <laughs> that was like a, it was like a, a fake out I didn't I did not expect you know I think but, too uh, with uh with this whole first season I'm really, for one, like I do hope that they keep going. I really want to see where they go with it. But there was one character that just, I mean, he's barely there, but I still really enjoyed. And that was Raj, the boyfriend of oh, yeah. Jin, because he's got like some crazy stuff going on later down the road. But all of the little, like very subtle, like little 
uh, like Easter eggs and dialogue between like him and his family. Like every time he showed up and every time he was in a scene, I was like hanging on every word he was saying, knowing like there's more meaning to it. I mean, in a sense, he's, I mean, you, you, one would expect the physicists to be the ones that are like so logical about everything, but he's the one that's like so logical, you know? Yeah. Um, like he's not, he's not as, he's not as likable as Davos Wade, you know, like, it, you know, he's very similar to Wade in a, you know, in yeah. a sense, but like, he's not, he's not cracking jokes and, and being as, <laughs> and being as lovable as, as Davos, but like, right. They're very similar in that, you know, they know, they, they know their end game. They're going to be as draconian as possible to get there. It makes sense. They want to save lives um, and they want to save humanity and they're going to do what it takes to, to get there. And so when, yeah. when, when she's like getting, he's getting screamed at for like, for killing a bunch of kids on a, on a, on a ship, he's like, I'm talking about saving humanity. What, what, right. what, are, you, what are you talking about? We're at about, war. You know? We're at war. War. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was a fascinating character. Um, but obviously they needed, they needed the relationship between him and Jin to, to sour a little bit in order mm -hmm. to make room for, for Will. Yeah. For whatever in, comes in her heart. next. Yeah. <laughs> in her heart. Yeah. Do you think you would ever read the series? I think I would. I think I'm, I mean, I'm, I think I'm interested. Some people say that it's, that it's, uh, I mean, it's a translation. So translations aren't great, but you know, the, um. That it's a little dry and 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 hard it to is get into. Dry. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when I when I saw this show, I'm just like, how are they taking this concept that I know is just gonna be, you know, high sci-fi? And and it's like DD did it by being like, look, we're gonna we're gonna put a whole bunch of little dumb stuff in between all of the high-minded sci-fi, yeah, pace it really well, have beautiful direction, pretty good acting, and let it go. Uh, I think it was a, I think it was the right formula. I I'm very impressed with D and D's work here, and I do want to read the books. I do. It's yeah. just you know I'm surprised that the reviews of Three Body Problem they 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 trend on the pretty good side, but I'm mm -hmm. surprised it's not. People aren't like, oh, this is fantastic. Um, the reviews are strange. Like there have been some weird ones where I'm like, okay. Yeah, I saw one that's like that said like. Dan and Dave like destroy another book franchise. And you're like, what? Like, first of all, even fans of the three body problem <laughs> know that the three body problem is not a fucking perfect, like not a perfect book series in any respect, you know, like it's got high ideas, but like, you know, it's, it's not like people are like great characters. You yeah. Know? That's, like, I mean, the that's the biggest, series. that's the biggest complaint. Like it's the character work is like, eh, but I yeah. mean, it's it's all about the concepts. And I think what they did really well for the show is like breathe a little bit of life into these characters, give them some different personality types, stick them in rooms and situations together and allow them to act out, you know, their feelings and whatnot. Where in the books, it's just like this happens, this happens. And you don't really spend time with like how they're feeling and, you know, any emotions really. It's not a very emotionally driven story except yeah. for like, yeah, when I mean, it seems like the, 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 the books are a story that's, that gives you the opportunity to see these, these concepts come to life and play out, mm -hmm. but you're not necessarily like on the edge of your seat, like what's going to happen next. You know, this, yeah. you're, I'm watching it. I'm like, oh, what's going to happen next? Oh my gosh. You know, they know how to end each episode. You know, they know how to be, they know how to like to, to draw you in. So I don't know. I feel like it only came out two days ago. How many people have really finished all eight episodes? Like are people reviewing stuff without, are, are they review bombing it? It's, are they, are oh, they still angry it's, about? It's absolutely about, being review bombed. Before the show even came out, there were over a hundred like one star reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. People can't let the D&D &D thing go. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Like the sense of justice is strong with them, I guess. <laughs> but Yeah. I mean, look, like, you know, I, I think D&D &D fucked up the end of Game of Thrones as much as the next guy, <laughs> if not <insane>. more. <laughs> but it's not, you know, when they do good, I can't be like, I can't, I can't like, in good conscience be like there's there's something wrong with the show like i'm searching for things that they did wrong 
Yeah. Like that I mean, they specifically did wrong. Like the things that I come up with that are wrong about three body problem are stuff from the source material. I'm trying to think of anything that they did where I'm just like, oh, that was a bad choice. Yeah. I mean, I don't really think that there's, there's much like when I reviewed it for my channel, I'm like, okay, I'm talking about the things that I like. And I'm like, I really had to like sit down and be like, well, what was it that, you know, what did they struggle with? And I mean, the only thing that I could come up with was my expectations as a book reader, mm. you know, finding the pacing different than the books. Therefore, right. like it was noticeable to me. <clears throat> or like, I mean, you could like listen to like the criticisms I had, like I'm, I'm looking back on it, talking to you because I haven't really like <laughs> thought it through yeah. too much. Before. Like my biggest criticisms are not every character I was fully invested in. Like, that's, yeah. that's like, that's <laughs> really, that's the worst thing you could say. Not every character I was fully invested in. Cause I was fully invested in most of the characters, yeah. right? but not every character was incredible. Only right. some were only pretty good, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, like, like Augie, like still Augie and Saul, pretty good characters. Like, did I care? Did I absolutely 100% care about them? No, but I did care about them. They were right. pretty good, you know. Like Car the cared worst enough. thing, I, yeah. cared enough. <laughs> I cared enough. All the special effects were great. All of the pacing was great. There was never a moment I was bored. I just wanted to okay. watch the next one right after. It was uh, all the characters were all very consistent. No one, no one did anything nuts. So there was not. There's yeah. no like uh, any problems with the plot and logic of the plot. I can, or I, one can blame on the book. I don't think there was anything that the like, show added where you're just like, what is, what does that mean? There's no teleporting characters or anything like mm -hmm. that. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think for me, it's the little moments, like the little dinner scene between Raj and Jin and his family or oh, yeah. the moment where Will is walking into the building to buy a star, no dialogue whatsoever he's just looking at that screen watching like video of earth you know happen and i'm like <laughs> like trying not to sob you know like yeah. that's that's done all the great. things all the things that he's never going to experience yeah yes like it was great that was wonderful yeah yeah, yeah. no i mean that's that's the thing like like on a very basic level like, did it make you feel something? And it's like, you know, tell me that like it didn't make you feel something when 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 Jack got killed. Tell me it didn't make you feel something when when Will is sitting with Saul in his hotel in his uh, hospital room, you know, talking about life and like yep. and Saul being like, no, don't do this, you know, and and you know, Will Will does it anyway, you know. All those things, all those things were uh, were incredible. Tell you know, tell me that you didn't feel anxiety and fear about the countdown the same way Augie felt like anxiety and fear about the countdown. Yeah. All, all of them were, uh, all of them were, it was, <sighs> see, now that I'm talking it out, talking it through, I think I like, like the show more. Even more. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm really searching, I'm really searching for problems with it. And it's, it was just, it's a solid fucking show. All right. So thanks for, thanks for joining me once again. If you're anytime, watching anytime. out there on the YouTube, like and subscribe, and I will be back once again, and I will see you then.